Aloha, and welcome back to Movement Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Christine Linders, your host and physical therapy orthopedic clinical specialist. Today, we're kicking off Shoulder Injury Prevention and Treatment Month by talking about shoulder surgery and how you can live the life you love and keep those shoulders healthy and pain-free from future injury as you go about your life. Personally, I've had five shoulder surgeries, four between the ages of 19 and 20, and a fifth a year and a half ago. Since then, I've completed three Ironman triathlons, many three-mile swims, and am still playing and competing a little bit in beach volleyball, as well as working as a manual physical therapist and enjoying my active life thanks to the surgeon who put my shoulders back together again, Dr. Kevin Shea. We are speaking today with Megan Kumo, who was playing basketball for the University of Connecticut when we met in the training room. She was a big role model of mine in choosing the surgeon I did, and she had just undergone surgery herself, and I was about to. Meg and I will be talking today about how we've managed to keep our shoulders healthy and the bumps along the way in order to enjoy our shoulders during the activities that we love. And you'll learn more about the anatomy of the shoulder complex, the unconscious movements during your day that are making your shoulder vulnerable to injury, and the simple ways you can correct them. Let me welcome Megan Kumo, color analyst for the UConn women's basketball team and fellow former collegiate athlete. Aloha, Megan, and thank you for joining me on Movement Matters. Can I say aloha if I don't live in Hawaii? I, I, I wish I did, though. You <laughs> it's can cold say, here in Connecticut. <laughs> you can say aloha anywhere. It means love. Awesome. We're sending love to you. So, so Megan and I both had uh, shoulder surgery. We had suffered some subluxations and dislocations, she while playing basketball and myself while playing volleyball. So Megan, how many years ago, or you don't have to tell me that because I don't want to tell you that, but what, what, did, what happened to you? Was it dislocations? How did you hurt your shoulder? So the first one was my right shoulder, my freshman year, and we were at Boston College and I kind of slid down and I went to block a shit like block the ball out of a girl's hand. Um, and when I did that, my shoulder just popped out uh, and I fell to the ground and I went back in. So I'm like, oh, okay, that kind of hurt. And I, and it was a close game. I remember going out of the game and then, then I looked at Gino and I'm like, I'm okay. I can go, I can go back in. And then I went back in and they were pressing us. And I remember I, I got the ball and I went like this to throw it. And I'm like, oh no, this wasn't a good decision. <laughs> Threw it. So that was the first uh, injury. And then uh, I just rehabbed it then. And then the next year I, we were at St. John's and I was rebounding the ball with my left hand. And this girl from St. John's had her hands on it and was pulling the ball and I was pulling it and my shoulder just popped out. And then the trainer, had to put it back in right there on the floor. Oh. So, and then I, but then my right shoulder sublexed many times my junior year. And then the spring of my junior year, I had surgery from our boy, Kevin Shea. Uh, our boy, Kevin Shea. I know I need to get him on the show. So it's funny that it's not funny, but it's funny that you mentioned the trainer put it back in. That just bought a, a memory back of my first shoulder dislocation. I was a probably not supposed to be doing it, but it was my freshman year in college and I was playing in some, I don't know, all-star tryout thing that they have you do. Uh, I can't even remember where it was, over the summer. And I went for a big swing on a, a set that I had to reach a little bit too much for and out it came and it was kind of a little off and I had seen, uh, I don't recommend this by the way, but I had seen Lethal Weapon so I went back. <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say that. Oh, I was 17 years old. I mean, uh, 18 maybe. Maybe this was before college. I uh, I went in the bathroom and I just I took my arm and I put it up against. I was trying to like move it around and I couldn't. So I put it up against the wall and did this. And I uh, and I put it back in and I, I went through the tryout. I don't know how, but it wasn't until the next year in uh, in college, you know, playing I was playing middle front, but she also ran me middle back because I was a floor rat. I was just scrappy. I would touch everything. So diving baseline like this all the time, it just stayed out. And so when Kevin met me and went in for the scope, he said there was a one inch tear in the in the labrum. And so they took it out. And I, I, uh, I remembered why, because I did that. I took it right off. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's ooh, crazy. So, so when you had surgery then to, so that you could use your arms overhead without 
subluxing and dislocating yeah. while you grab balls from these girls and you be aggressive with rebounding and block shots and all that. What uh, what kind of surgery? Do you remember what you had done? I know for both of us it was is a while ago. Well, I here's what I do remember, and he I I've seen Kevin over the years, and he always laughed because I t I had local anesthesia. <sighs> I talked through the entire operation and, you know, I was a little loopy and I, I started calling him Bob Vila at one point because I heard like a <laughs> drill or something. And I thought it was a sugar tack, but I think it's called oh, yeah. sure tack. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's the only reason I remember that because I was like calling it the wrong thing. But I think he just tightened it up. I have two, t you know, you probably can't even see um, like the little scope marks, you know. You just had just the little like holes. One here. Yeah, they're just right up here. I honestly, God, you probably can't even see them. Man. It's been, it was 1991, uh -huh. probably 92. It was, it was 91. Um, was it? Because I had mine yeah, right so after. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Funny. So, yeah, so it was a long time ago. And um, the rehab, it was hard. My senior year, I just wasn't the same player. Because if you think about it, like with basketball, yeah, like so much of your arms, are out at this, like you're posting up, you know, you want the ball or you're boxing out like yeah. this, your shoulders are up in this motion and it's just impossible because it would, they would get hit all the time. And, uh, you know, I did tons of rehab. I mean, we were both in the training room so much. I know. Um, those elastic bands, my, oh, right. Yeah. How many of those things did we do? Thousands. Um, thousands. yeah. Um, thousands for sure. So, I mean, I was never quite the same, but you know what? He did a great job. And, you know, I'm really lucky that my shoulders are pretty good today. I, I'm, I'm pretty active. Like, you know, I like to play golf. I like to work yep. out and because um, I like to eat. I know. Well, <laughs> so, I mean, we have a lot so in common. I like to eat and drink and I got to, yeah, I got to work <laughs> out. So uh, your your shore tack or sugar tack, it's funny. I, I think I called it a sugar tack back in the day. I had what they called uh, anterior capsular shift. So if we go to image number one, this is from the ONS MD. And that just shows the, the lower part where it says capsule. Uh, mine was stretched two times the length of a normal joint capsule. So Dr. Shea went in and cut that off and then tightened it up and shortened it up. So I, they might have called it a short tack. I might have had a slightly different procedure, but for the same thing, that subluxation mm -hmm. dislocation. And so if we go to the second shot of the shoulder anatomy, you can see it, it's pretty complex. There's a lot of tendons going in there. Uh, there's a clavicle, mm -hmm. there's a shoulder blade, there's rotator cuffs, there's biceps, and there's labrum. And the labrum is the cartilage structure that holds the ball in the socket while all the other muscles control the ball on the socket. That bicep tendon, that little skinny tendon that you see going up in the front, that helps hold the ball in the socket as a, as a muscle tendon complex, whereas the labrum and the capsule help hold it on the socket. But you and I both dislocated, so we had stretched out our capsule and or tore mm -hmm. our labrum. So just as far as shoulder anatomy, when we were strengthening, we were strengthening our rotator cuff muscles, but also image number three, the scapular muscles are so important over on the right, your rhomboids, your serratus, your lats, your trapezius, your posterior deltoid, all those muscles in the levator scapula, they control the position of the scapula. And it's kind of like a coordinated dance. Like one of the hardest dances that you could possibly do might be, I'm not sure I'm not, a, I'm not that kind of a dancer, but maybe flamenco or there's these dances that are so incredibly hard. The shoulder blade muscles have to coordinate the shoulder blade so perfectly so that your rotator cuff can just stabilize that ball on the socket while you block shots and grapple with balls on the ground and box out and keep people at arm's length so you can get your position down below. And it's fascinating that we can have a capsular shift yeah. and rehab and maybe not get back to that level because of the the time and the way the brain works with, hey, wait, that was injured. I gotta, I gotta protect myself. I'm not sure I'm as strong as before. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. fascinating. So like you, you golf and you've had some kids and holding your babies, your shoulders have been good over the years. What kind of problems have you had it's, any? I mean, I honest to God with my shoulders, obviously holding my kids, you know, they were, I, they, my son, well now in 14, 13 and 11. So when they were babies, I mean, I had like kids all over me all the time. <laughs> 
Um, but I did have some trouble back then with my shoulders, but I have been really lucky that I, I really haven't had much shoulder pain. Now the rest of my body is a little bit of a little different story. Um, and I don't know if there's any sort of related um, situation with my elbows and stuff, but it's just weird. Like, and then my, I had the late torn labrum in my right hip. Oh yeah. So yeah. I don't know if, so I, and I have arthritis in my knees, uh, so I can't really run. So I, you know, I also abused my body for a long time playing sports. So, you know, some of it's just natural wear and tear, you know? Some of it is, I always say with the, um, you know, when you have elbow and hand issues that is not arthritis driven per se because of genetics or like beating them up and it's too much joint wear and tear over the years, which I don't know that, I don't know that you would get the elbow thing in basketball. You could like in volleyball, you can, but um, your posture is so important to the performance mm -hmm. of your shoulder, elbow and hand, because when our posture is forward at all, like without being perfect, I know I was sitting up straighter too, the muscles mm -hmm. of your shoulder don't hold it in the perfect spot. And then your elbow, which is a joint further away and your hand become more vulnerable. A lot of people working on computers can get tennis elbow or golfer's elbow just because they're forward. And so where their shoulder complex and those shoulder blade muscles should be stabilizing that shoulder joint, it's not. And so your elbow muscles have to do more of the work. Or if your elbow is not supported on a surface, but it's uh, swinging high, those muscles have to do more to control the joint and that can affect your elbow and your hand. It's one of the things I like to talk about with computer workers is, hey, like my patients too, you got to support your elbow. You have to find a way to support your elbow because if it's swinging free, people get neck pain, people get rotator cuff injuries, and they also get tennis elbow mm. because you're not supporting the limb and we're doing it for, I mean, you could be hovering your hand over the mouse like this with the muscles on for 15 minutes on a call listening to someone before you go to look something up. It, it could happen. Or you're on a phone call Absolutely. and you're not resting your hand. You have to let it rest. And over time and as we age, it becomes problematic. And so I know we were going to do a phone call yesterday where I was going to show you these sorry. stretches for your hand. Yeah. Is that something that you're doing for your elbow? Yeah, I'm trying to. I've okay. got to do that. Yeah, for sure. Because I, I know I, yesterday... I'm on board. You're on board, but yesterday you had a great reason for us not getting together, which we will, because you were watching. Tell me. Yeah, the UConn women. Yeah, the UConn women were winning a championship yesterday. That's Their right. Championship. Go so, Huskies. So, I mean, you know, sometimes you got to take one for the team. You got to take one for the team, <laughs> but we're going to meet up, you know, we could do it tomorrow. Um, so I can yeah. show you, I wanted to show you more stretches when you were talking about your elbows and your hands, because Absolutely. the thing I like to convey to people, like those little stretches here to make sure you have the normal range of motion. Uh, we could jump ahead to the pec stretch for your posture, which is uh, image mm -hmm. number eight, where you're standing in a doorway with your hands mm -hmm. on the doorway. I like to put one foot in front of the other always so you're not hanging on your shoulders, but you just... Bend the front leg a little bit just to stretch out your chest. That helps to open up your posture so that you can do strengthening exercise. And another way, if that one's uncomfortable, is image number, the next image, which is the T stretch, I call it, because they look like letters of the alphabet, where you put one leg in front of the other again, and you gently lunge forward so your weight's on the front leg so the weight is not on your shoulders. And that helps to open up your chest, especially if you've been child rearing, nursing a baby, mm. working on your taxes, picking up groceries, doing laundry, yeah. like doing your work. <laughs> like when you're doing your yeah. color analyst and you're sitting at a desk and you've got to talk to people and you're maybe using your hands or writing things down, you need to undo that sport. I say that all the time, mm. undo that position so that over time in five years, you're not more hunched. Mm -hmm. so I'll, sh I'll show you Very those. True. But for everybody- I'm psyched, yeah. You're psyched. So we're going to go to a break briefly. Uh, my name is Christine Linders. I'm the host of Move Movement Matters. We are talking with Megan Kumo about shoulder surgery and how to keep your shoulders healthy afterward so you can enjoy your life. We'll be right back.
Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, the host of Hawaii Together on the ThinkTech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Hawaii Together deals with the problems we face in paradise and looks for solutions, whether it's with the economy, the government, or society. We're streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 2 p.m. on Mondays. I want to thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you. Again, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. We're back. We're live. I'm Christine Linders, Think Tech host of Movement Matters. I'm speaking today with Megan Kumo about shoulder surgeries and how we keep our shoulders healthy to enjoy the life we love. Welcome back. So Meg, before the break, we were talking a little bit about posture and how it could affect your, your elbows and hands. And one of the things I wanted to show for you and everybody about posture is that when we are slightly even hunched forward and we go to reach our arm, you can't reach as high as normal. So if we go to the video, you'll see a picture of this person slouching and raising their arms and they can only get so high and then sitting up straight and then raising them overhead. So for anybody watching it, try it. Hunch forward and raise your arms up forward as high as you can and then sit up straight and see if you can go higher. Why this is a problem? because we need to reach overhead. We need to reach into a cabinet, which I show a little picture of reaching into a cabinet with your posture erect. And then the second picture, reaching into a cabinet when you haven't had good posture. And so that can pinch the shoulder and that can impinge on the rotator cuff and cause a rotator cuff tear, which I have in another image of. You'll see that over time, as you reach and reach and reach, that top little red muscle, the supraspinatus, can get pinched up underneath the clavicle and the scapula where they intersect there and you start getting fraying. There's many ways to get a rotator cuff tear, but when it comes to posture, it's usually reaching when you've been slouching, reaching in the backseat of the car on a slouch posture, mm -hmm. reaching and lifting something heavy, like a heavy briefcase out here. And over time, that's, that's a internal tear that you can get. And then all of a sudden, you go to grab something and you're like, oh, what happened? I don't know what happened. And you have a rotator cuff tear. Or if you go to spike a volleyball like I do, or, or you go to block a shot in image number seven, and you've had a slouch posture, that arm has to be really high. So you're not just spiking a volleyball once or blocking a shot once or grabbing a rebound once. You're doing it over and over and over again. And that's when your rotator cuff becomes vulnerable, even though you don't even know it. So Posture is something that I used to hate to talk about, but I talk about it all the time now because it's the one thing that we can control and call our awareness right. to, to feel better, look better, have our shoulders and our back be better, our neck be better. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, uh, it's so true. You know, Christine, I, I and I told you um, long before you asked me <laughs> to do this, this show with you, I saw one of your videos. Did you, ha, could you have posted it on maybe some sort of social media? I, I don't know. I, I did. I posted what? it on Facebook. Yeah. Okay. So that was where I saw it and it was fascinating. And it talked about a lot of these things like our everyday kind of patterned behaviors that we do and how without knowing they can lead to different, whether it's a rotator cuff or whatever, all these different injuries. And it was fascinating. Um, and so it, the funny thing is you didn't even prompt me. I just watched it one day and I'm like, that's Thank so you. true. And there is, the, yeah, it was great. And it is stuff there, like the posture thing, as you, much as you may not want to talk about it, like, you know, we're at the ages now where, gosh, it's more important than ever it is. to sit up straight, pull in your core. Um, and I, and I, you know, and I find I'm sitting probably a little bit straighter today than I normally do because I know you're here, yeah, but it's right. a really good lesson and I feel better. Like I, a lot of times, cause I do sit at the computer a lot and some days when I'm lazy or tired, I I'll be slouching and then I'm like, and then it kind of bothers my back or me you know, my low back and I'll try to sit up straighter and do what I got to do. But I, I definitely consciously try to do it, but I, I feel better when I sit with better posture and sitting more erect i just feel better physically it's just i mean so i try to do it and you know obviously there are days that i fail but i try to do it i think that's great and there was a show that i did uh about mindset and in getting to the next level and what you want to achieve and i talked also no it was a different show it was posture and the 10 ways that posture can 
improve your life. And we were talking about how, you know, I went to this Tony Robbins thing. It was the best year yet in San Diego. And he was like the final speaker. They all spoke for like 20 minutes and he had us all get up and he asked all slouch and frown. And he asked us how we felt. And then he's like, sit up straight, stand up straight, jump around. And how did you feel? And I was trying to tell people that Sitting up straight not only is good for your body, which is something that I am a big promoter of because of biomechanics and the way your neck sits over your shoulder blades and your shoulder blades sit on your rib cage and your humerus sits in the socket and your low back also gets affected as you mentioned. But also when you sit up straight, you immediately feel more confident, happier, you look better because you look prouder. <laughs> and if you are depressed or you're bummed out about something, Sitting up straight can be that one avenue that improves your mood enough to get you out of what you're in and moving forward with your life because we're all struggling with different things at one point or another or yeah. all the time, you know? And yeah, absolutely. Posture, I agree with that. Posture is a great thing. And, and I've, you know, I never liked to nag people in posture when I was a new PT because we were always nagged as kids to sit up straight, but I started nagging people when I realized that. I was doing everything I needed to do as a physical therapist and they were doing their homework, but the one thing they weren't doing was sitting up straight more. They were sitting slouched more. And I used to tell people, hey, listen, you don't have to be perfect, but if you are sitting up straight 51% of the day and slouching 49% of the day, then the strain is less and you progress from there. Be proud of yourself, 50, 51% you're up, 49% you're down. Yeah. Now the pain can start going down because the strain is starting to go down. And then you achieve a 75 to 80% and then you relax. It's okay sure. to relax. Yeah. Sure. Now, did you get positive feedback from those folks? I did. I did because I think yeah. there's, oh, there's always ways for me to try to have, to help my people, my patients, my friends, my family have an epiphany where they're like, oh, I get it. And I think people get the, oh, I can't sit up straight all day long, but you know what? I can do it more than half my day. Right. And it's not as overwhelming when you, when you, it was so smart of you to pitch it like that. Just pitch it in a way that, listen, just try a little bit, a little bit at a time yes. is far less cumbersome to people. Right. It is. Well, and by the way, when you talked about nagging, I have to tell you this, when I was <laughs> in like middle school, I must've been in like middle school. My mother always used to tell me to stand up straight, but she always told me to suck in my belly. I love it. Like your just mother. always kind of poke. And I got to tell you, it, it bugged the crap out of me many times back in the day. But I am so thankful because the, you know, the, I, it, that was less of a problem area for me most of my life because my, my core was always pretty strong because I was always sucking it in. It was crazy, but it's something that I've always done. So I can't believe you just said that. And I don't know if anybody can see this, but I wear these wristbands and I make them for my patients that say suck it in. No way. And it also says on the back, end low back pain. Uh, so I wrote oh a book. I wrote a book in 2014 and I titled it Suck It In because I believe in engaging the transverse abdominis. It's been a little bit delayed. It should come out in the next month. But okay, I have been telling buy. people, yes, to suck it in because not only do you suck it in and it improves your posture, but it also gives you that flatter stomach that you were just talking about because it holds, it runs this way. It holds your organs in. It holds everything in. Mm -hmm. And it's also the deep core that works with your pelvic floor, your diaphragm to keep that trunk, that torso stable so that your mm -hmm. arms and your legs would be stable. It's so, so important. I love it. And, and then when I was doing a <laughs> video... I tell you, um, as I'm approaching 50, this core is getting a little softer. <laughs> You've had but three kids. Goodness. You've had three kids. I you know. just need to retrain it. You need to uh, remodel it. And, you know, when you're know. when you're doing your orange theory, because I know you're doing orange theory and you love it. Love it. Do you still yeah. suck it in? I do. I try. Okay. Well, so, like today, today with the 10-minute row, I was joking with the lady next to me that my fat rolls were prohibiting me from leaning forward at times. Uh, and I was struggling to breathe at times, but uh, I, I managed to get through it. <laughs> I think it's great. So were you squeezing your shoulder blades back too, as you rode? Uh, at, at, at minute eight, probably in nine and 10, probably not, but I try, I usually try to. Okay. And actually I had went and seen this hand specialist recently. 
his oh, yeah. wife was on the treadmill on the rower next to me and we were and she told me who she was and we started giggling so, so you know we you know we try to have fun it's we have just a couple minutes left but you had mentioned yesterday and i wanted to touch on this for everyone too that you really need to stretch more. You feel like you don't stretch enough, but you should do this yoga tape, but it takes so long. And as we get older, we're less motivated to do a long tape, right? And so- 100%, like I, and I love how I feel after I stretch, Yeah. but I don't know what my problem is in motivating myself. I, like I have this tape that I do, and of course that's how old I am. I'm saying tape, right? Like we, yeah. you and I talked about this before. <laughs> so now it's like a link or whatever um but it's like 40 minutes and it seems like a, like a day I, I, how if, am i going to do 40 minutes worth but i feel so good when i'm done but getting through it is difficult for me so one of the I things one of the things that we were going to go over too when we met earlier it's yesterday but you were watching the game which i would have been if i wasn't preparing for this right so go yukon again is there's just a few exercises that we all need that we should do every day. A couple stretches, a couple strengthening exercises that can get you what you need to do. So at least you're doing that. And then when you have the time, you can do the video. So I showed a couple of those stretches today, the T stretch mm -hmm. and the W yeah. stretch. I was making sure I didn't knock anything yeah. over. And uh, <laughs> next time we're gonna show some more. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up right now. Megan, thank Perfect. you so much for coming on. This was awesome, Christine. Thank you so much. You are the best. This was great. So for those of you watching, we're gonna wrap up today. Thank you so much, Megan Kumo, for coming on the show to talk to us today. And we learned a couple stretches today, the the T stretch and the W stretch, but stay tuned next week if we can we're going to be learning specific exercises from athletes of hawaii and myself who have been surfing and body surfing for decades that are going to teach us how to keep our shoulders healthy so that we can do our sport for the rest of our lives thank you so much to think tech hawaii our sponsors and our donors and meg kumo for coming today aloha everyone we'll see you in two weeks and remember Life is better when you listen to your physical therapist.